Hello and welcome to Trojan Sports Now. I'm Jamal Kennedy. And I'm Kyle Shook. Stick around as we bring you the latest news and scores from Troy Athletics. Tipping off with men's basketball. I'm sure a lot of people have been glued to their TVs this past week due to March Madness. And I'm sure a lot of brackets have been busted as well. But there was one game that all of Trojan Nation was focused on. That would be the Troy versus Duke game that took place on Friday. Troy put up a good fight against the Blue Devils and at one point was down by single digits. Troy trailed by just nine points at the beginning of the second half, but the Trojans could not overcome the number two seeded Blue Devils. The Trojans fell 87 to 65. And there are a lot of offensive sparks for the Trojans. The athleticism of Duke proved too much for Troy. The Trojans did begin to rally back from behind though, with the help of Jordan Vernado and Wesley Person. But the slow start was too much to overcome. Head coach Phil Cunningham said he loved the fight his team displayed. They played with no fear. We didn't start the game off very well, getting down 16 to four, and we thought we'd have the jitters, and, and we did, and we played like that. And, but we fought back. We cut it to eight. Uh, second half, cut it to nine, and, and you know they were good today. Duke was really good, and, and they did a terrific job uh, defensively. But, but we fought, and, and just so proud of how our guys. Let's look over to the bench. With 14 points to close out the season, and Jordan Vernado had a double-double with 18 points and 10 rebounds. The football team held their pro day on Tuesday at Veterans Memorial Stadium, but this story has origins in Trojan Arena, where the men's basketball team plays their home games, and head coach Phil Cunningham was in-house on Tuesday. The men's team completed their biggest season-to-season -season turnaround in school history, going from a 9-win 2015-16 season to 22 wins in the 16-17 season. The Trojans' season ended last Friday when they fell to the Duke Blue Devils 87-65 in the first round of the NCAA tournament. But their season didn't end before the Trojans won four straight in the Sunbelt Conference tournament to become the Sunbelt Conference champions. Head coach Bill Cunningham was here on Tuesday to talk about future goals for the program. Our goal coming in was, okay, we, we've got to get this program to the, to the point where year in and year out we can compete for a title. Our programs now is set up for sustained success. Now, does that mean we're going to go to the tournament every year? No, I mean, that's the goal and that's the dream. But, but we're, we're, we're to the point now where when you look at the Sun Belt uh, year in and year out, we're going to be one of those teams competing for the title. The Trojans won't lose much talent. The core of Wesley Person and Jordan Vernado will return for the Trojans when they hit the court in the fall. The women's basketball team, for the second straight year, made it to the NCAA tournament. And for the second straight year, they were ousted in the first round. Now both the men's and women's teams made it to the big dance. And unfortunately for the women's team, the Bulldogs of Mississippi State topped the Trojans in the first round. Troy won the tip-off and got on the board first to open play. But the Bulldogs ended the first quarter on a high note with a 27-21 lead. Troy started to close the gap in the second quarter, coming within nine. But then Mississippi State put Troy in a drought as the Bulldogs went on a 10-0 run. The Bulldogs ended the half leading 56-27. Troy went on to battle in the second half, but ultimately fell short as they never could stop the Bulldogs' offense. On the bright side, Troy's Caitlin Ramirez finished her career as the second highest rebounder in Troy's D1 single season history with 342 rebounds. And two-time Sunbelt champion Chanda Rigby was also here on Tuesday to talk about her second straight NCAA tournament appearance. The women's basketball team fell in the first round for the second consecutive season. This year it was a 110-69 loss in Mississippi State. Kayla Ramirez had a rough shooting night with only five points, but Mississippi native Clarissa Banks scored 15 back in her home state to lead the Trojans. Here's head coach Chanda Rigby on the atmosphere and flow of the game. Doing well in the first quarter. Uh, second quarter, he made some adjustments and actually put a couple of his starters in. At the same time, that Caitlin Ramirez uh, went out on the to, to the bench in foul trouble, and then uh, Jayla Chills, who's one of our best players to play in that type of atmosphere, we were trying to shoot every seven seconds. She went down with a shoulder injury, so it was a bad combination. We only scored six points in the second quarter, and that was pretty hard to come back from. The Trojans, of course, end their season as the reigning Sunbelt Conference champions, but will lose key players in Caitlin Ramirez, Jayla Chills, Clarissa Banks, and Takira Gibbs. The Troy Trojan football team kicked off spring practice last Thursday. And just a month ago, one Trojan, Antonio Garcia, was participating in the NFL Combine. A projected second to third round pick, but today was not his day. Well, sort of. He would work out for several NFL scouts later on. But while he didn't participate in some Troy Pro Day activities, other Trojans such as Rashad Dillard, Jalen Roundtree, and others participated in the vertical jump, 
broad jump, bench press, and 40-yard dash, just to name a few. The reason behind the Pro Day event is so that those that either opted to turn down a combine invitation or didn't get invited can impress on-hand scouts. The Troy Spring Game will be held Saturday, April 15th, and the NFL Draft will begin April 27th. The Troy baseball team won their first conference series this past weekend, but failed to secure the sweep on Sunday. The Trojans faced off against Arkansas Little Rock Sunday and lost 10-3. The bats were hot on a warm afternoon as both teams combined for 26 hits. Mason Rogers led the Trojans with a 3-for-4 performance that included a double, and Brandon Lockridge also turned in a multi-hit game for Troy, going 2-for-4. Chase Smart added a seventh inning double to the hit parade, and Houston Mabry unfortunately suffered his first loss of the season. The Troy baseball team took their weekend series over Arkansas Little Rock and are also coming off a game from the visiting Bulldogs of Sanford Tuesday night. Sarah Drake tells more about the game. The Troy baseball team competed in a midweek matchup against the Sanford Bulldogs and came away with a 9-2 victory on Tuesday night at Riddle Pace Field. Coach Smart credited Evan Haybear on his pitching. I think it was important for our team to get back in a good place. Uh, Evan Haybear was terrific tonight. Six dominant innings. Uh, great to see him throw well. We needed it. Uh, set us up for some offense. Even though the team was not able to get a lot of bats swinging and balls hit, Coach Smart said he is still proud of his team for finding a way to win the in-state contest. We took advantage of their poor uh, strike throwing ability. They walked 13 in the game, so I was really proud of the win. We didn't swing the bat very well. We didn't hit a lot of balls hard. We hit two home runs. Uh, Justin hit a big home run, Trevor hit a big home run. But we didn't hit any balls hard, but it was ball one, ball two, strike one, ball three. It was all over the place, so I think that played a part of it. Uh, we've got to swing the bat a little bit better. And after the game, I had the chance to ask Coach Smart how important it was for his Trojans to get on the scoreboard early in this game, and this is what he said. Well, it is it is critical, especially when you're pitching. Uh, the two runs in the second inning, I thought, set the tone. Uh, got us a big lift and uh, allowed Evan to go out and continue with those strikes. And then we jumped back the next inning and got four. We're up 6 nothing, and it really relaxed our team. I thought it played a big part in the game. On Friday, the Trojans will welcome in the Raging Cajuns of Louisiana Lafayette for a three-game series. Sarah Drake, Troy, Trojan Vision Sports. Though the Trojans only recorded five hits, they still managed to score nine runs, mostly thanks to the five Sanford errors. And the Trojans did fare as well in their Wednesday follow-up in Birmingham, falling to the Bulldogs in the second night of the home-and-home -home series. Troy gave up a run in each of the last two innings to drop the second game of the midweek series and four to three being the final score. The Trojans failed to hold on after taking an early 3-2 lead after scoring all three of their runs in the, sec in the third inning on back-to-back -back doubles from Matt Sanders and Brandon Lockridge. Key note here, Troy has not won at Sanford since the 2013 season, which also happens to be the last time the Trojans swept the season series against Sanford. The softball team dropped their opening Sunbelt Conference series last weekend 2-1 against Georgia Southern. But this weekend against another Georgia team, the series result was different and was capped off in a big way. Jalen Bivens has the action. The Trojan softball team ended the weekend facing off against Georgia State in a doubleheader on Saturday and a final game on Sunday. The Trojans defeated the Panthers 9-7. Becca Harley and Kaylee Hussey both delivered home runs in the top of the first inning. Head coach Beth Mullins was very satisfied with the offense, but she couldn't take all the credit for it. I'm going to give that all to my assistant coaches. I mean, they came in here and we really worked this week on a couple things that we needed to make adjustments on, and they did. So I give Coach Smart and Coach Hupp a lot of that credit. So I think the girls listened, and we were able to put a lot of runs. After suffering a loss last week to Georgia Southern, Coach Mullins was very happy with the outcome of the game. And it was championship Sunday, and the Sun Belt's always a dogfight. And, you know, our first two ball games were one-run ball games, and I expected nothing less than to have to go extra innings. I mean, they're a great team, and... I could not be more proud of the fight we showed. Um, Rachel Rigney coming in there at the end of the game and just kind of shutting, shutting them down helped us. And then, you know, two big hits from Madeline Porter and Stephanie Snyder. It was huge. This is the second time Stephanie Snyder was the hero for the Trojans this week. Snyder hit a game-winning home run on Wednesday against Southern Mississippi and hit the game-winning home run Sunday afternoon against Georgia State. Yeah, she has a tendency to really get it done at the end, and, you know, that just shows will. I mean, you can will a lot of things to happen, and I think she had struggled early on in the game, and the fact that she still had a quality at bat and gave herself a chance is key, so it was awesome. Coach Mullins added that it was just another day in the Sun Belt. We really said we were going to throw the whole, the, everything and the kitchen sink, and we really did that. So, I mean, Meg Willis got some, again, it's it's the Sunday of the Sun Belt. I mean, everybody's seen everybody, and you just got to keep changing it up. Jalen Bivens, Trojan Sports Now. 
Though the Panthers out hit the Trojans 14 to 10, it was Troy who got the last at bat and ultimately the last laugh in the end. And on Tuesday, the Trojans also walked off a game, but unfortunately things didn't turn out as well. Check out the highlights. Entering Tuesday night's matchup against UAB, the Troy softball team was sitting even with the 15 and 15 record, but a three run seventh inning rally from UAB knocked the Trojans down to 15 and 16 after falling by a final score of 3-2. to two. It was a pitcher's duel. I thought they did a good job of keeping us off balance, and Rachel Rigney threw an amazing game. I mean, I left her in there for one too many outs, and, you know, I'll take all responsibility for that, but she threw a gem and um, deserved the win for that. Rachel Rigney Brown got the start in the circle for the Trojans and pitched into the seventh inning before giving up the tying runs, but Coach Mullins takes the blame. Again, I thought Rachel Rigney threw a great game. I mean, she really did, and I think that's always a positive. I mean, she went a solid six you know, innings and did a great job of giving us a chance. And I'm standing out here in center field by the 220 sign where Stephanie Snyder's last two walk-off hits have landed over the wall. But tonight she just missed her third walk-off homer of the season. But Coach Mullins knows you're not always going to be that fortunate. And, you know, just weren't able to quite, you know, we got real close to walking another one off. But, you know, you can only expect to do that so many times. Our offense was a little stagnant, but give UAB credit for pitching well. But, you know, I think we did a great job. You know, we had an off day, so we didn't practice before. And I thought the girls came out ready to play and you know, put together a really solid seven innings. We were just unfortunate not to come out on the right end of that. This weekend, the Trojans welcome in Sunbelt Conference newcomer Coastal Carolina for what Coach Mullins knows will be a challenge. I mean, they're, they're a quality team just like everybody in the Sunbelt. I mean, I think they're going to fit in just fine. So they've got really good pitching. They've got good defense, and they've got really good hitting. So, I mean, we're going to have to, just like every conference series, go in there and pitch well and play defense and have some timely hitting like we did this last weekend. Prior to Tuesday's game, Becca Hartley was named the Sunbelt Conference Player of the Week after a week in which she hit for a 615 average and belted three home runs in three straight games. She also recorded another hit Tuesday night. The women's tennis team is holding their own, and Monday they took on Central Arkansas at the Lunsford Tennis Complex and took down the Bears 4-3. The doubles point was won after the doubles pairing of Sine Ota and Nancy Karaki put on the Bears 6-2. In singles play, Alicia Rodriguez Hey, Jamal, didn't you say you had class with her? Anyway, she took down her opponent 6-0, and 4-6, and six, and 7-5 and five to clinch the match for the Trojans. Sine Ota and Hannah Caesar also secured victories for the Trojans in singles play. Here's head coach Rawia El-Sisi to recap the match that she says was very important. Actually, the girls yesterday, they needed a good win, and they competed starting from their doubles. You know, we play doubles and three doubles and six singles, and... They clinched the doubles points pretty solid, and uh, they get into a single, po a single match in every court. They're, they're fighting, and I can tell they're really ones that home win badly. And um, you know, I was I was so proud of them after the match. It was a strong win for Troy, even though it only put them at four and ten on the season. And the women's team closed out their home slate in the regular season with a decisive seven nothing victory over Alabama A&M on Wednesday. The Trojans swept the doubles competition with Sine Ota and Nancy Karaki defeating their opponents 6-4. On senior day, senior Elisa Ro Alicia Rodriguez, yes Kyle, that same Alicia that I have class with, was honored. And it was her day to shine. She helped her doubles partner Hannah Seitzer take down their competition 6-1. And in singles play, Rodriguez once again swept her opponent 6-0 in straight sets to cap off her career at the Lunsford Tennis Complex. And the Troy golf team has wrapped up play in Greensboro to close out the Linger Longer Invitational to finish 4th of 15 on the weekend. Troy finished with a 2 under 286. Seniors Luke Moser and Jared Betcher tied for 3rd in the field with 16 birdies. Added to that, Moser, Betcher, Cam Norman and Clayton Vanoy all finished better than the nation's number 5 golfer, Jimmy Stanger of Virginia. And while Troy took 4th, the Trojans only lost out on 3rd place to Georgia by one shot. And it was a strong showing for the women's golf team as they competed in their third tournament of the spring. The women's team was in Augusta, Georgia for the 3M Augusta Invitational and finished fifth overall in a field of 14 teams that also includes 11 ranks in the top 100 nationally. Individually, the Trojans were led by sophomore Bianca Lobauer who finished in fourth place after her round of two under 70 in the final round. She birdied five holes total on the day en route to her first under round of the season. Trojan star Fatima Fernandez Cano also tallied a top five finish, her third on the season. And Gabby Oubre finished in a tie for 18th place, which was her third straight top 25 finish. 
Still to come on Trojan Sports Now, we'll have a preview of the Trojan softball team's matchup against Coastal Carolina this weekend. But first, I sit down with discus and shot put thrower Zach Douglas, one of the leaders on the track and field team. Stick around for more Trojan Sports Now. <laughs> 